Jack's training camp is right around the corner. Before you know it, well, it'll be here. Fans will be in the stands watching the team practice out on the field. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll start rolling out some position previews as we get you ready for what's going to be expected out on the field. Those will be coming your way over on newsforjacks.com. But Pro Football Focus and some of the other national publications have maybe got a little bit of an early start on it uh, compared to us anyway. So they're rolling out their rankings for position groups and they're ranking them against the rest of the NFL teams. The Jaguars, uh, their numbers leave a little bit to be desired. Here's a look at what Pro Football Focus thinks of that Jaguars roster. They have the O-line ranked 23rd in the NFL. Not great, it gets worse. Receivers at 25th, running backs at 12th, D-line at 26th, Linebackers at 7th is pretty good. Secondary at 29. So, so not exactly great numbers. Some of these numbers I think I can live with a little bit more than others. I got two that I really take exception to. And the first one I want to talk about is the Jaguars defensive line group. 26th is no way a solid representation of this Jaguars D-line room. So... Look, last year you had two guys on the Jaguars defensive line that racked up double-digit sacks. Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker. Both were busy sacking the quarterback last year. So can we expect them to have a couple of more big seasons for the Jaguars? I think this guy you definitely can. And I think we can make a solid argument that Trayvon hasn't played his best football yet. So saying that these two combination of edge rushers is on the 26th ranked defense in the NFL or defensive line group in the NFL, uh, that's a tough pill to swallow because how many teams have two edge rushers that can go and get you double digit sacks? Not many. So the Jaguars feel pretty good about that, but the, the group's not done because they made some big additions compared to where they were at last year. Bringing in this guy, Arik Armstead. Arik Armstead coming off of a, a Super Bowl run with the San Francisco 49ers. He is a big guy. He's been a dominant defensive lineman throughout his career. The addition of him to the Jaguars defensive line group is going to pay huge dividends. So we've gone through three players that are in the defensive line room, and just the combination of those three on their own should tell you this is at least, at bare minimum, a middle-of-the-road defensive line group. And that's not to include some of the other guys. So one of the new faces that I'm kind of excited to see how he develops is Mason Smith. So Jaguars used a second-round pick on this guy, and this is kind of a, a home-run swing kind of pick. I said it when they drafted him. Nobody knows what Mason Smith's best football looks like because at LSU, injuries were the name of the game. So the question is, how quickly can he get up to speed here in Jacksonville and can he stay healthy? But if you can get a healthy guy who gets up to speed, you got a chance to have another monster in the middle of that Jaguars defense. So you've got veteran guys, you've got guys that can get, go get to the quarterback and stop the run, and you've got a guy who has all the potential in the world. And just one more guy that I want to actually talk about on this Jaguars defensive line group that might benefit the most from the addition of Arik Armstead, and that's actually Roy Robertson-Harris. So Roy has played a whole lot of snaps for the Jaguars since he came here. Last year, he played just about 60% of the Jaguars defensive snaps. The next closest defensive lineman to him played 30 percent. Roy has been playing a ton of snaps with the addition of some of the guys like Mason Smith, like Eric Armstead. That opens up Roy to maybe not have to play so many snaps and that makes him a better player, opens the door for that. I think Roy Robertson Harris might be a guy who benefits the most from this increased depth along the Jaguars defensive line as they go and try and show everybody that they're a much better group, not just on paper, but going to be a much better group on the field than what Pro Football Focus has in mind. I don't know where they got that one from. Now, the other group that I have in mind that I have a little bit of an exception with is that Jaguars wide receiver room. So I understand why people are maybe a little bit down on the Jaguars wide receiver group. You lost Calvin Ridley, right? But but if you watch the Jaguars play last season, we all know that the most important wide receiver on the team last year was Christian Kirk. And the Jaguars are getting him back, and they're getting him back healthy. And this is a guy that has always had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, but I think he might have a little bit more of a chip on his shoulder and point to prove at this point. But Christian Kirk is a guy who is increasingly valuable. He's the Jaguars' number one wide receiver. We can talk all we want about other guys. We talked about Calvin Ridley, and all that happened was Christian Kirk got hurt, and the offense stopped. It's blatantly clear this guy's your number one, and that's end of conversation. But they did do a little bit of work, so Kirk's not by himself. They got Christian Kirk, they go and add Gabe Davis, and they also add Brian Thomas Jr. So let's talk about Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas Jr. If you watched the Jaguars offense last year, there wasn't a whole lot of plays down the football field, right? So what do you do? They go and get two guys that specialize in making plays 
down the football field. Gabe Davis averages over 15 yards of reception for his career. Brian Thomas Jr. is a big, fast guy who is killing guys down in the college football world with just slim fade routes. Very simple. Go run straight down the field and go get open. And it worked. He's a first-round pick. So the combination of adding those two should open up the Jaguars' offense exceptionally. And then I want to add Parker Washington to this one because he is probably the guy with the most hype around him from this Jaguars coaching staff of anybody. I mean, they talked about the jump he's made, that he looks fat, bigger, stronger, faster. I know they say that about a lot of guys, but Parker played a little bit for him last season. He was coming off a pretty significant injury from when he was in college. Now he's healthy, second year in the system. Maybe there's a few extra opportunities for him out there on the football field. The Jaguars wide receiver room, while on paper, you lose Calvin Ridley and people are like, oh, maybe it's going to be worse. I like the composition of this year's Jaguars wide receiver room much better than I did last year with the pieces that were there. And I thought Calvin Ridley was going to be really good. But I think that this combination of talents is going to be much better for the Jaguars offense as a whole and should open up things for Trevor Lawrence and for all of these guys to make some big plays out there on the football field. Look, overall, the Jaguars have a lot to prove. We saw it last year where teams were or people were picking the Jaguars to be the Super Bowl favorites and to make this big run through the playoffs and win the AFC, and then we all know how that storybook ended. It didn't end great. Don't expect that sort of fanfare, that sort of media love from the national guys this go around because of how last season went. They're not looking at maybe the additions, the changes that were made to this Jaguars roster this offseason. They're looking at it and saying, ah, last year they showed us they couldn't hack it when, when times got tough to late in the season, when they had an opportunity to go and, and put their stamp on things. Look. I overall, and I share the sentiment with a lot of folks around here, I think this is going to be a very different season for this Jaguars team. While the national sentiment might be that the Jaguars are going to take a step back, I actually think this roster is poised to take a big step forward. Now, we'll be keeping an eye on everything as they continue to march towards training camp. Best way to keep up with everything is by checking out that News for Jags podcast. You can track that down over on newsforjags.com. All you have to do, click on that handy-dandy sports page. Or wherever you get your podcasts, make sure you subscribe while you're there. Justin Barney and I drop new podcasts all the time. We'll have them rolling your way all the way up until training camp, and then we'll start dropping new episodes daily. So we'll have everything you want to know about your favorite team.